everybody. My name is uh, Tara Scherner de la Fuente, and uh, I. But here, I'll switch to the part where you can actually see my name. You can just call me Tara, it's fine. And I am a software engineer at Roostify, which is a kind of a tech company working on mortgages down in San Francisco. But I work from my living room over in Selwood, which is awesome, um, with my cat, Lulu. And I know, right? Lulu. Whew. Uh, she's watching on Facebook now. No, she's not. Um, <laughs> probably. I mean, what do you... We, I don't know. Um, so you can find me on Twitter at Media Remedial. And I've actually, as I looked up, I just remembered I have donuts on my head. Would you believe I owned this like before anybody asked me to come talk? It's true. It is true. And in fact, the last time I wore it was, I, w I just wear it around the house. It's, this actually happens. I have cow ones and giraffe ones and I have lots of them. Anyway, I. I work virtually and uh, I was going for stand-up and I turned it on and the camera went on me and usually I just see like I've got rosacea but then I realized there were donuts on my head and nobody said anything <laughs> which I don't know what that says about me or them maybe they respect boundaries I don't know but anyway I just looked back and I realized oh gosh I've got donuts up there um, but you can also find me at um, so media remedial on Twitter and then also when I am a goat uh, you can find me at goat user stories on Twitter as well and by the way I do have um, some goat user story stickers here which um, I'm happy to give until they run out oddly enough there was this deal and Black Friday happened I don't know something happened and now I have like window decal goat user story <laughs> stickers it just there was a special and I was like I I have the only car currently with a goat user stories decal on it but if you want one you too can can make that happen so I brought a few of those so my talk today is, uh, it's, I've given various length and formal versions of this talk. This is clearly not one of the formal ones. Um, but the, um, the idea of it is onboarding superheroes, but I realized as I was prepping to talk with you tonight that um, it doesn't have to be about onboarding. I'm hoping that some of the things that I talk about today, they're just really like brief practical tips on how to, the idea is how to be an onboarding superhero. Both somebody who um, does onboarding, like for a new employee, or even uh, is being onboarded and how you can be a superhero at that. But um, I, I realized that a lot of it just has to do with being um, kind of an awesome person to your fellow coworkers. And so hopefully you'll find something that resonates with you and, and so without further ado, how to be a superhero. Um, so the, my very first tip uh, is really easy and really practical, and it's your name. Now, this works especially well with people you don't know all that well because most of your coworkers hopefully know your name, but this is not about just like introducing yourself to the new person, but reintroducing yourself is the key thing here. So you may have met a new employee, especially either earlier that day or earlier that week, or the next week, with an, a new employee is just completely, utterly overwhelmed. So you just, it's real easy. You just, uh, hey, I know we've already met, but you have probably learned tons of people's names. My name's Tara. I work over, you know, in back-end engineering if you have any questions or whatever. And by the way, if there's anybody's name you think you're supposed to know and you've totally forgotten it, I will slip that to you on the down low. That is like onboarding superhero goal, being willing to keep their confidence, make them look good, because, oh, of course they know Brad's name, because everybody knows Brad. He's like the CFO who signs the paychecks. And so that is just an easy thing to do. And just reintroduce yourself until it gets just like uncomfortably awkward. <laughs> or, or don't, maybe you're not like me, you won't go that far. But it'll get close where it's clear that they know your name now. But you can still sort of put yourself out there as that person who's willing to slip them the information that, that they need and who's looking to make it a little easier for them. Because um, when you are a new employee, this is what it feels like. And, um, oh, wait. I, I include this guy in all of my slides for any talk, yet there I can find a way to slip him in at any place for any reason. And uh, I got one special for you folks today. Look at that, right? 
So I had the headband, and now I've got this guy. Okay, so, but this is what it feels like to be a new employee. Everything is totally overwhelming. And anything you can do to make that easier for somebody is awesome. So, um, and one of the other practical things I was thinking about is all of the things we use shorthand for. Like, uh, I mean, tons of acronyms, the tools that we use, those differ from company to company. If they're a junior engineer, it's totally overwhelming. I mean, who the hell knows what Slack, Jira, Waffle, uh, Confluence, all these Git, where it's hard enough to Git, much less remember what the hell Git is. So if you can just make it a little easier saying, hey, if you use Jira, it's a ticket, our ticket tracking system. If you need any tips on that, happy to show you what's worked pretty well because it tends to break every time we do something. Uh, but I know how to get around that. Um, you know, you don't want to be a know-it-all, but at the same time, if you can just add that little, like, our applicant or our, our ticket tracking system or um, some kind of explanatory phrase afterward, I mean, that's, that's awesome stuff. It's very easy. The, the key is just to look for opportunities because all the things are new for a new employee. So, um, and as I talk about these things, of course, I'm also, you know, how do you spot the superhero at your company or, or at a company you're joining or something like that? And it's the person who's doing these things, who's asking you, you know, questions that don't put you on the spot, but help them figure out how to help you. And they're the people who are asking questions or, or slipping you their name or somebody else's name. So that's, that's how you spot a superhero. So man, I love this slide because I'm a developer and it's... And, and I used to be an English professor, so words, words are fun. Um, okay, so this guy, this guy is um, Daryl Rivera on the right. That's Daryl Rivera. He is one of my superheroes from about two years ago when I got my first development gig. And um, it was my first, I went from, I, basically I went from English professor to assistant dean to junior engineer. That wasn't terrifying at all. Um, so I had what we commonly th might think of, you know, there are no stupid questions. Oh my God, there are so many stupid questions. And I kept like my stupidest, stupidest, stupidest questions for Daryl. Like the things I knew I should have learned and didn't know. And I would ask, you know, basic stupid questions to all the people because, you know, I wanted to show I wasn't afraid to do that. But the super secret ones, I slipped to Daryl. And, and I, told, I didn't realize what I was doing, but it turned out that I, what I was doing was limiting my exposure. Only one person in the company knew I should not have been hired, that this was a huge, huge mistake. Daryl was the only one. And so in the first like couple of weeks, or maybe even the first four weeks, I think, um, if I had a super, super, super stupid question, or usually about Git, if I had a stupid question, I would be like, Daryl, I have I don't, I have no idea how to cherry pick. I don't know even what that means. But everybody makes it sound really scary. It turns out that's really easy. But the first time I turned cold, clammy, and wanted to pass out completely because of something that happened in Git, where my code like vacuumed up somebody's commit and just sucked it all in and it, I'd pushed it and oh my God, uh, I turned pale, it was like 4.59 p.m. on a Friday, Ooh, pale, oh, it was awful. Daryl saved me, and Daryl kept my secret. He never told anyone that I shouldn't have been hired, and he never told them that I literally, and I mean, there is no figuratively here, I li literally almost passed out after my code enveloped the thing on Git, and it turned out that was totally fine, and it wasn't even my fault, if you can imagine, but that, that somebody else had not rebased well. Um, which I could not do. Uh, now I can, you know, I coffee, I'm making coffee, and I rebase with a foot, and it's fine. But that's because of Daryl. And so what you want to do is offer to make that secret pact with somebody. And sometimes that can come where you offer them the name of somebody that they think they're supposed to know and they don't know. But And keep those secrets. And I do want to say that um, Daryl and I shared supervisors, and uh, I told him, once I was confident more with my git and some of the other stuff, and I didn't feel like a complete imbecile every second of every day, I told him, you need to know, I asked Daryl all my stupid questions so he wouldn't fire me in the first few months, and, uh, 
And my boss just laughed, and Daryl got a promotion. Not because of my conversation, probably, but it probably didn't hurt, right? And so you can level up. You can, you, you know, bring that into your performance review. You have now mentored a new employee. You have mentored your fellow colleagues. So uh, do it, and then bring it up in your performance valuations. That's awesome. Um, okay, so this next one, this is a kind of another, I'm going to try to look, I'm an engineer, I can get my water and talk to you. Um, this next one is real easy. This is just sort of a switch in language. And um, this would come up especially early on when you are thinking about maybe going to lunch with a new colleague or maybe somebody you haven't gone to lunch with before. Instead of saying, hey, do you have any, um, do you have any food intolerances or any uh, dietary restrictions? Just switch it up and say, what are your dietary restrictions? And for a new employee, that is huge because, again, if you remember the rabbit with the pancake on its head or the donut, you know, either one, that's what a new employee is feeling like. And they're feeling maybe like I did with Daryl, where I am slowing everybody up by asking tons of questions. I'm not catching on. And now it's the end of the day or it's midday, and I've got to advocate for my needs. And maybe you're too exhausted to advocate for your own needs, or that fellow employee is too exhausted to advocate for their needs. So just make it easy. If you switch it from do you have any to what are your dietary restrictions, that person is no longer thinking, do I advocate for myself here? Do I explain that I can't eat sugar and I've got all kinds of other issues? You're just, it's expected. You're expected to share those now. Now is the time. And it's not a big deal because I'm just asking you, what are those things? So even switching up your language can help. And this one, um, there are too many invisible disabilities for me to possibly list. Now, visible disabilities, those are, you know, kind of easy to sort of think, oh, how could I, how could I make life easier for this person and make sure that they have everything they need? But there are tons of invisible disabilities out there. And um, so this slide is really to encourage you to just Google invisible, invisible disabilities. Don't try to say it too many times out loud. Um, and get out there and find out what some of them are. And, I'll, and I want to give you just a quick example. Um, when I started at that company two years ago, I, um, I weighed a, a lot more than I did now, and I had stress fractures in my feet from the weight that I was carrying around. Also, I tried to go to a physical boot camp to lose weight. Turns out you should not do that when you're over 300 pounds. You shouldn't just go from the couch to the boot camp. So um, I did that, and I broke both of my feet, but nobody could tell that. Um, by looking at me. I, w I had braces in my shoes, but nobody could tell that until it was lunchtime and folks took off. I swear they were running and they took off running uh, for, for lunch and nobody asked whether walking 10 blocks was going to be a big deal. Now, 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 thank goodness, it is not a big deal for me, but nobody even considered whether you know, hey, it's about the, the restaurants about 10 blocks away. Do you want to walk or we could catch an Uber? Uh, Joe can give us a ride. You know, just thinking ahead, you don't know what disabilities, and it doesn't have to be a physical one, but you don't know what disabilities there are. So get out there, find out what some of these invisible disabilities might be, and try, if you can, uh, to accommodate them. Okay, one more. I just have to share one more because I have no idea how much time has passed, but what the hell, I've got the mic. Um, I, w when I left my last company, um, I was in demand. Yay, it felt great because uh, Daryl didn't give away my secrets. I don't know if I mentioned that. It's very important. Um, so there was a company here in downtown Portland that had an open house for engineers. And, you know, they, th they throw all kinds of food and booze and stuff at you when you go to these things. So I walked into the lobby, and again, um, the person from this company trotted me upstairs to the second floor, which now I didn't have stress fractures in my feet, and I could trot upstairs, which was nice. But on the, s the second flight up to the office, I thought they didn't even consider whether or not I could do that. I don't want to work here. So if you are recruiting for folks, um, knowing about invisible disabilities or disabilities and just being ready to think ahead about those things can mean a lot just in terms of recruiting, much less keeping them once you get them there. Um, my main point through all this is that we're all just really kind of a bunch of vulnerable meat sacks. And so anything you can do 
to consider the vulnerability that might be in your fellow meat sack is awesome. That is the onboarding gold. I mean, it's not about like, you know, what have you oriented to them? Are you being a team player? I mean, it's really just what can you do that is so much more awesome, like to protect your fellow vulnerable meat sack and possibly bring it up in a favorable way during your performance evaluation. So, um, <laughs> I, I look for opportunities, um, you know, I had that slide at the beginning about, you know, like I just sat down and there's the superhero signal. The, my idea here is that it doesn't have to be that hard, that it can be as natural as sitting on your couch and getting something done just by being more aware of your fellow men, women, and non-binary folks at your companies. And thank you very much for your attention. And that's it.